All right, in this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through how to set up a fixture and several light objects, which are referencing that fixture so that you can have uh, a pixel mapped situation where you have your movers or your uh, park hands, wherever they might be, uh, referencing the texture that's coming out of the projector and doing its thing. So uh, the first thing we wanna do is uh, create a new scene and we need to put down a fixture. So this fixture can be uh, anything you want it to be. This is going to hold uh, the picks for all uh, 10 of our lights in this example. So uh, if your lights are not back to back in terms of their address offsets, you may need to put them back to back. And if they cannot be back to back, then uh, we'll go through an option uh, B that will give you a different way of going about it. So, all right, the first thing we wanna do is create a couple hulls. So I'm going to turn on grid snapping and I'm just going to put a couple holes uh, down. And then I can do a select all and do a generator from selection. And by default, we have 10 pixels and we'll go ahead and leave that the way it is. Uh, let's go ahead and make them a little bit bigger though so we can see them easier. All right. So by default, these are just picks. Uh, you can drive your, your lights uh, as is without any additional uh, light objects, but the light objects let you visualize what you're actually doing in a more realistic way. So to create a light object is pretty simple. We're going to do it differently, but I'm going to show you the manual way to do it first. Uh, so if you go down here to light, just click on this and you can place this anywhere in your viewport. I'm going to snap this to our edge here. This should be pixel one. And we can verify that it's pixel one by going into the pix tab and zooming in here. Uh, and you can see that zero is hovering above that. That's pixel zero, so that's correct. So let's go back to object mode, let's grab our light. Um, and we can go ahead and scroll down some here and we're gonna adjust some settings. So under pix link, this is by default off when you create a light manually. So we wanna turn this on. And uh, the next thing we wanna do is actually parent this light to our fixture uh, because we can specify a fixture by name, but we can also just let the uh, double dot syntax specify the parent fixture. So you can rename stuff on the fly. It's a little bit more convenient. So I'll just go parent light one to fixture one by dragging it up. And once we've done that, we'll go back over here. Uh, Pix ID is set to zero by default. Uh, and you notice that we had zero uh, over this uh, pixel over here, so that's actually correct. If we were gonna be referencing the next pixel over, we'd wanna set this to pixel one. Uh, but for now, we'll leave this pix zero, and we'll set our red, green, blue, pan, and tilt channels. Uh, these are control channels, so we need to tell the light object what channel from the fixture is driving which one of these real life channels. So uh, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we want to control a uh, red channel with our R channel our green channel with our G, and our blue channel with our B channel. And the reason, the, the place I'm getting these from uh, is the generator and the fixture. So if you click on the fixture and you look over here under Chan order, you'll see red, green, blue. And this got filled out by our generator. When we use a generator, uh, the Chan specified here actually uh, populate the fixture. So you don't have to do this manually, but if you're generating your picks uh, by hand, this is something you'd have to fill out manually. Um, so this is fine because for this fixture, uh, let's say these are park hands, we only want red, green, blue. And so that's all we need to deal with as a control channel. So back to light one, uh, this is pretty much good to go. If we wanted to go ahead and finish this out manually, we could go ahead and take light one, duplicate it, and move it on to the next pix, kind of like that. And then over here for pix ID, we would set this to one. And now we have uh, this light matching this pix and this light matching this pix. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now this is gonna take a little bit more time if we did this manually, so I'll show you a few of the tools that you have at your disposal to do this more automatically. So I'm gonna delete lights one and two. I'm gonna grab fixture one. I'm gonna go into pix mode. And I'm going to go ahead and do a select all. Grab all of our pix. And then I'm gonna click this button here called light from selection and you're gonna wait a little bit and this is gonna create uh, 10 lights because we had 10 picks selected. And it's going to automatically link and parent them to the fixture object. So this is actually really convenient because now 
at the parented, you can move this around as a unit, as a big group. Uh, or you can go in here and you can move these lights around and you don't have to worry about moving the picks. Uh, the picks can stay exactly where they are. In fact, you could turn off the uh, fixture one from visibility and you can still see your lights doing their thing. So that's pretty useful. <clears throat> All right, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if I wanted to have these facing up like park hands on the ground or something like that, I could go ahead and just grab these lights and on RX, just set this to something upwards facing and there you have it. So you have uh, lights, they're linked. If I wanted to create a projector now, where are you? There you are. Uh, we could move this back and we could scale this up on X and then we could apply our content to these fixtures uh, that way if we want. If you were doing uh, data from an outside source from a console or something, you would just go to settings and you would turn on your pass-through settings, either ArtNet or Streaming ACN, and you just enable that. And your uh, fixture offset settings would dictate which values and channels got um, you know, sorted out to which particular lights and which one channels they have. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, the next thing I will show you is the last thing, and uh, I'll go ahead and delete this. If you are dealing with a moving headlight or something with more channels, a little bit more complex, uh, there's actually a, another way to do this. You can go to Tools and Fixture Wizard. And the Fixture Wizard is going to let you set up your own fixture. Uh, so we can just go ahead and fill this out. Red, green, blue. Let's say we have a, a five channel light with a red, green, blue pan tilt. Uh, obviously this is probably more simplistic than most lights out there uh, will literally be. <clears throat> but just to give you an idea, if we wanted to add more custom channels, we could put uh, this to a higher number and we could type in uh, prism, iris, and stuff like that, uh, shutter maybe, uh, whatever, it, whatever it is we can just name them and then we can utilize these with projectors and stuff. But for now let's just keep this at 5 and we'll uh, leave the name alone, uh, device ID is fine. Uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and click these chain icons here and since these are um, parameters that we can drive in our light object, we need to link these channels to uh, these parameters of our light. So we'll go ahead and uh, pick red, green, blue, just matching these across the line, uh, pan, and tilt. And you'll notice that once we clear up all the errors, we can now click create. All right, now that we have our fixture created, uh, we can simply uh, close this window and start working with this fixture here in our viewport. So maybe we want to rotate this one to be facing up as well. And from here, uh, we can just start duplicating this fixture and placing it kind of wherever we'd like. And we want to duplicate it again. And now we have three fixtures. We can set their device offsets to something different. Each one can be unique. And they do not have to be back to back. That's the advantage of using different fixtures is that you can address them differently. So uh, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching.